I was sitting there listening to Andy's, Andy's music, and for a minute I forgot the title of my talk, and I panicked. <laughs> I said, oh, my God, what was my talk about today? <laughs> and then I said, oh, my God, it's on my slides. Don't worry about it. <laughs> what we do to ourselves, right? So life is not a spectator sport. How many spectators do we have around here? Well, there is, see, you don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> We do it all the time, don't we? We don't get into the game for a lot of reasons. And we sit on the sidelines and look at other people and we judge them or we get envious of them and say, oh, it would be so nice if that happened in my life. And then we sit there for a little longer and we say, okay, I'll do some affirmations, which we believe, of, believe in in this center. I'll do some positive affirmations, and then it'll all happen, and my world will change around. But then I don't do anything else. I just do some positive affirmations. And what happens is that someone or something will come into our life and say, oh, come on, let's go out to, let's go out to dinner tonight, or, or let's go to a movie, or let's go do something, and what do you say? Sure. No, you know, I just really don't feel like it. <laughs> right? <sighs> So how often do you sit on the sidelines and watch others play the game? Think about it. We all do it in so many different ways. We don't get involved. We don't let ourselves go. So, you know, when you were, you were a kid, you did that. Because sometimes you were afraid of being hurt or people would laugh at you. I mean, you're more delicate then not as confident in yourself. But now that you're grown up, again, think about the things that you're sitting on the sidelines about. What are you not getting involved in? What's holding you back? What, why do you do not participate? And a bottom line, and all of it is, is what are you afraid of? It's fear. Fear is so entwined in so many things in our lives. Fear. Oh, I'm not afraid of anything, <sighs> right? I'm an adult now. I don't have to worry about the, like the spooks under my bed or in the closet. It's none of that. No. Don't have to worry about any of that, right? <sighs> Voltaire says, God gave us the gift of life. It is up to us to give ourselves the gift of living it. Isn't that cool? God, 1778. 1694 to 1778. And listen to him. That fits today, doesn't it? Wisdom was around and has been around since the very beginning. Just gets said in different ways by different people, different times. That's all. Wisdom is wisdom. So, are you spending your time? What keeps us locked in and not participating? Are you spending time with the wrong people? And I, I tried to find people that were, um, went on Google, you know, good old Google images. I love Google images, right? So I went on Google images and I said negative people. And what came up? <laughs> I didn't create it, Colin. But his, he was like the first like four rows <laughs> in all different poses. And I thought, well, I guess that tells me that's as best I, as the best thing I can do. And you cannot hang out with negative people and have a positive life. So think back or think of what's going on right now in your life that, and the people that are in your life. And how many negative people are there? Close your eyes. You don't have to blurt out their names because they may hear you and you don't want them to do that. <laughs> so picture somebody in your life right here and now that you'd like to get rid of. Just figuratively speaking, that's negative. That you wish you didn't have to be around. Picture that person right now. Okay? Now, like the balloon, watch them just be deflated and out of your life. Not that they're going anywhere, but it's up to you to change your perception of them. It's up to you to let go of that balloon that has become this big, buoyant thing in front of you that you just can't see beyond. 
Because if there are never p negative people in your life, guess what? Are you ready for this one? You're the negative, of, negative one that is attracting them into your life. So there's something inside of you that's negative that keeps bringing negative people into your life. Ouch. Who wants to hear that, right? We don't ever want to know, or we, you know, there's so, so much within us that we don't really want to say to ourselves, well, I'm creating this. If there are negative people in my life, it's because I am letting them in. I'm open to them because something inside of me says that I am not worthy or that I'm negative, that I see the world in a negative aspect or in a negative viewpoint. Think about it. And the next time you see that person, okay, send them love. Now, I would suggest if it's somebody at work, you don't go up and hug them and tell them you love them. Please don't. Just send them love from your heart space. And something will happen. Either they will be transferred to another department or somehow there will be a job in another state. If you do it long enough, your perception and everything changes. And it's not them, it's you. Life is too short to spend time with people who suck the happiness out of you. Negativity breeds negativity. Remember, it's not the people that stand by your side when you're at your best, but the ones who stand by your side when you're at your worst. Those are your true friends. I have several true friends. I am so blessed, and I feel so blessed every day to have true friends in my life who are there for the ugly, the deep sobs or whatever, you know, that ugly cry, whatever it is that you wish you'd never do in front of anybody. But they're there saying, okay, it's okay. And they're also there for happy times. Another reason that we can be on the sidelines is that we are running away from our problems. Okay? You know, if you keep running away from your problems, it's a race you'll never win. Guess what? Wherever you go, there you are. We've heard that before. So what does that mean? That means that wherever you go, you take you and your thoughts and your feelings and your beliefs and all that other stuff with you. So no matter where you go, you got all that stuff with you. You can't outrun it. So you might as well stand up to it to start living life fearlessly. Now, okay, um, let's clarify that. Please don't go jump out of planes or bungee jumping unless it's something that you're really ready for, okay? Face your problems head on. It won't be easy. There are, there's no person in the world capable flawlessly of handling each punch thrown at them. Our experiences ultimately, ultimately mold us into the people or the person that we're here to be. I know I've, I've mentioned this before. There was a biodome out in the desert. And I know a lot of you probably know about this, some don't. And it was a, they, what they did is they had this beautiful dome and they covered this area and they planted all these beautiful plants and vegetables and flowers and they had the perfect temperature they watered them the right amount and the trees would grow to a certain uh, a certain height or the plants would grow to a certain height and they'd fall over and they couldn't figure out why these are falling over my gosh they have the perfect perfect atmosphere for whatever it was, whatever plant or tree or whatever, and they could not figure out why they were falling over. And then they finally realized they had absolutely no adversity. There was no wind in that biodome anywhere to help the roots go deeper. So that when something happened, they would be able to hold on. And it's the same thing with us. Anything that happens in your life, you can judge it as being bad, good, bad, ugly, whatever you want to do. But what I'd like you to start doing is take a really good look at it and say, thank you, God, for this opportunity to see something from a different perspective, to see something new. 
Thank you, God, for giving me the opportunity to grow and my, have my roots go deeper so that the next time some breeze comes up, I'm able to handle it. But do we think about things like that? Shake your head like this, because I don't think I'm the only one. No, when something comes up, what, what do we do? We panic. We go into flight mode or fight mode, whichever you do. And we think it's the worst thing in the world. How can this happen to me? Why me? Anybody have, no, don't raise your hand. But I know that we have why me's in here because I do that time, sometimes too. Why me? Why me? Why me? Oh, another one is, oh, this is a good one. Are you lying to yourself? No, I never lie. I'm the most honest person in the world. Right? We think that we never, ever, ever lie to ourselves. So what lies are you telling yourself every day? All right, I'll give you an, an idea. This is one of mine, and I stick to it reverently. Tomorrow I'm going to get up and I'm going to go and I'm gonna sign up for the gym. I'm going to start an exercise program. I am going to eat healthy food. Right? Fill in the blank. Today I'm going to. Tomorrow is the first day and I'm going to do this. I'm going to write that letter to the person that I really no need to apologize to. This is what I put in mind. And you know something? Every single time you don't do it, your subconscious mind, that beautiful little manifester within you says, you're a liar. You're not going to do that. You're not going to do that. And when you say it two or three or four times and you don't do it two or three or four times or so on, it keeps bringing things into your life so you have the excuse to not do it. Wow, look at how magnificent you are. Wow. Look, oh, I can't go to the gym tomorrow because so-and-so asked me out to lunch. Yay! Right? Or do a movie. Oh, you know, I have to work. <sighs> Very good friend of mine. I'm so proud of her. She walks her dog every morning at 4.30. She goes to exercise class four times a week after work. No matter how tired she is, she makes herself go. And I am so proud of her. And I look at her and say, yes, I'm going to do the same thing. And that inside little spirit says, okay, I've heard it enough. I know you're not going to do it, so I am going to make sure you don't do it. So the next time you tell yourself a lie, even though you say you don't tell yourself any lies, but the next time you tell yourself a lie, be aware of it. And after today, I promise you will. Because all of a sudden, it's going to pop up into your mind. You're going to go, oh, crap. That's just what Reverend Maggie said. Darn. I am making excuses. So now I have to do it. Right? Now you have to do it. Okay. The first and most difficult chance we can take is to be honest with ourselves because if you're not honest with yourself guess what you're not going to be honest with other people either and I'm not calling you a liar okay don't get angry with me and don't send in letters please <laughs> I'm calling no one a liar I am just saying be aware of what it is that's going on in your life and what you're thinking about and what you're feeling and what you're doing and what you're putting out into the universe and asking for Okay. There you go. I lost it for a minute. See, it, to it was getting upset. <laughs> I never lie and don't believe everything you think. How many thoughts do we have during the day? I know I do. And I think, where the heck did that come from? It was something I never in a million years would have thought of on my own. 
Could be something that I forgot. Could be something that's so far down in my, my uh, experience. Maybe when I was a child come, trying to come to the surface and say, I'm still here. Could be anything. And it also could be the fact that, you know, we are all connected in this one beautiful, vast universe. And you get other people's thoughts all the time. So filter them. Pick out the ones you believe and know that are yours and then start working on them if it's something that does not create a better life for you. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. We've all heard that. But what does that mean exactly? What does it mean? In quantum physics, they've done a lot of experiments and they found that whoever is doing the experiment has an effect on the outcome. Now, I'm not going to claim quantum physics, so again, please don't write in. But it means the fact that how you observe it and what you expect to get out of it is what you put into whatever it is you're looking at. And therefore, you see what it is that you want to see. Subconsciously, you're not doing this consciously. When you're in a situation and you perceive it to be, I don't know, ugly, threatening, and I don't mean threatening physically, but it's threatening something inside of you. You know how sometimes you get that churning? I don't know where you feel your stuff, but it's right here for me and my gut starts to churn and I, have, I start getting upset, that's a very good indicator. Because that says, it's trying to tell you, listen and pay attention. There's something inside of you that you need to face, if it's a problem, be aware of, if it's a habit, listen to it. Are you trying to be someone you're not? I had a friend once, we used to go camping together. And here we are out in the middle of nowhere. There's just like five or six of us, you know, maybe two trailers or campers or whatever. And no one around us. And she would come out every single morning in full regalia. She could not come out of that mobile home or motor home until she had her hair done, her makeup on, and everything, she just had to be perfect. Perfect. And the rest of us would sit around going, oh my God, look at her. <laughs> Do not bring a mirror out here because I don't want to see it. Because I would just get up, brush my teeth and say, okay, here I am. But how many times do we put on that mask or that face or whatever it is we're hiding behind so people aren't going to see who we think we are? And who is that? Somebody we don't like very much. Ah, this is the next one. Holding on to the past. Oh, boy. I know. I can hear the murmur and the rumble through the, through the audience. Holding on to the past. It's kind of like that, you know? Praying that the branch doesn't break. Holding on to the past. Oh, it was the good old days. Right? The good old days. It was the good old days. God, the 50s were so free. We had all this stuff, 50s and 60s. Oh, peace, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I was a child in the 60s. I was a child in the 50s and the 60s. I graduated in 67, so I really never got into that peace man, you know. But um, I, was, I was so blessed, and I feel blessed every time I think about it, that I was raised in a small town in Wisconsin, that we had freedom. Freedom that people don't have anymore because we close ourselves into that little cage of fear. We walked the streets at 10 o'clock when I was in high school. We'd go to, st to sock hops by the library and we'd walk home at 10, 11 o'clock at night. Never thought about it. My, we would leave our doors open and the neighbors would come over and borrow whatever it is that they needed and leave a note. Val, I took your bowl. We'll bring it back. 
That's the way it was. And kids today don't have that. They can't ride their bikes outside because their parents are afraid they're whatever, they're going to get in trouble. So they sit at computer games. And I'm not saying everybody, but somehow we lost that connection. And we think that the past was so great, and I'm telling you the past was so great, but then that, what does that do? That stops me from seeing the greatness in this moment. This is great too. This moment is wonderful. What we have for the kids today, oh my God, the information age. I put a question into the internet and I got 10,467,000,000 answers. I mean, my God. So how much more, how much more, how much more? But are we responsible with what it is that we have today? If you can't start the next chapter of your life, and if you keep rereading your, pa if you can't start the next chapter of your life, you keep rereading your last one. How would you like to, and I want you to visualize this. You're, okay, I'm going back. I was gonna say reading a book. You're reading an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and if you're a tactile person, it could be a book, that's okay. But you're reading an iPad. And you're, you're turning the pages, but the same page keeps coming up. And it's the same page and you keep reading it over and over again. And it's the same page and you keep reading it over and over again. And it's the same page and you keep reading it over and over again. And you think, God, this looks familiar. I think I've read this before. Really? How true is that? We do that in life all the time. We keep rereading our page that we said, this is our life. This is exactly who I've come here to be. This is exactly what I expect to experience. And so therefore it keeps coming around. So you just keep turning the page and it keeps coming back to the same page and you just keep turning the page and it's the same thing. Same relationship, different person. Same job, different company. Same in-laws, oh boy. <laughs> Different family. Think about it. Accept what is, let go of what was, and have faith in what will be. Because when you let go of the past, guess what happens? You open up to so much more. You open that door to let other things, more positive, phenomenal, fantastic things into your life. And they'll come pouring in. Just open to receive. And they'll pour into your life so magnificently, so wonderfully. You say yes. Oh boy, mistakes. We're all so afraid to make a mistake. As you get older, I have to tell you that it doesn't worry, it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> Oops, not like that. Oops. Oh well, I made a mistake, big deal. But I remember when I was younger, wow, it was so different. Oh, everything had, I wasn't, yes I was, I was a perfectionist. And everything had to be perfect. I can remember in high school, you know, well, in high school we used to handwrite papers, okay? We didn't have computers or anything else, so you had to handwrite all of your papers and your answers and anything else that you're doing. See how much we've grown? Yes. And so what I remember is that if I took out a piece of paper and it had a mark on it or a little line, or like a mark that was just you know, like when they were printing the, like the tablet or whatever, it was just a little watermark or ink mark somewhere, I'd throw the page away. I couldn't handle it because it wasn't perfect. And I didn't want anybody to think I put that mark on that page. <laughs> Go figure. How we grow, how we change. So... Doing something and getting it wrong is at least 10 times more productive than doing nothing. 
Every success has a trail of failures behind it, and every failure is leading toward success. You end up regretting the things you did not do far more than the things you did. Think of the things, okay? This is audience participation time again. So think of something that you would really love to do, but fear or something's holding you back. Think, and I want you to see yourself in that position of doing whatever it is that you want to do. Oh, no, no, no. If I make a mistake, people, people will judge me, and they'll think I'm dumb. <sighs> Let go. Now jump into whatever it is that you're thinking of. Jump into it. Feel how good that feels. All you have to do is watch Andy pay, play the piano. He's doing what he came here to do, is he not? Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> he amazes me because someone will come in or, you know, whatever it is, and he'll just start playing whatever it is that you ask him to play. No, you know, sometimes music, but most of the time you have a lot of things that just come right out of him his repertoire, he's just playing away. And when he's playing, you can see the bliss on his face. Next time, put the camera on him and make him feel <laughs> But what I'm talking about is he's doing what he came here to do and he knows it. And he has totally just immersed himself in that pool. How many, many, uh, how many of us can say that? <sighs> Mistakes, I can't, I should have done that. Mistakes are an important part of life. Build off your mistakes. It's kind of like that biodone in the wind. Okay, mistakes help you, roots go deeper. Oh Lord, this is long. Should I read this? Ah, we don't need that. Okay. <laughs> okay, take a picture of it and put, post it. It's just too long. It's about berating yourself for mistakes, okay? We all do that. You know, I made a mistake, and how many times do we beat ourselves up over it? <sighs> you say something, or somebody says something to you, and you go into your cubicle, or you're driving home, or wherever it is that you are, and on the way home, you're going, oh, I wish I would have said that. Am I the only one? You wish. You do this scenario all over with you coming out with a perfect whatever it is that wasn't a mistake. That's basically what it says. Are you looking for, uh, to others for happiness? Isn't that adorable? Aww. I love lab puppies. Most people are searching for happiness. They're looking for it. They're trying to find it in someone or something outside of themselves. That's a fundamental mistake. Happiness is something you are, and it comes from the way you think. It's an inside job. Inside job. Okay, what does that mean? It means you have to do it yourself. We keep waiting for someone or something, somehow, some way, to make whatever it is in our life that we may not like or whatever at the moment, we keep waiting for them to come in and make it better. Well, you know, when I have, well, when they show up, when this is here, right? We all, I do it, I'll admit, I admit, I do it. And thank God I try, I try, I don't try anything. I catch myself. I might not do it immediately, but the telltale signs like we were talking about, things will start going wrong or other people will show up that you really don't like to want in your life. And it's a telltale sign that what it is that you're thinking of certainly isn't happiness for yourself. So stop being jealous of others. Stop complaining and feeling sorry for yourself. Oh my God, if you only do. <laughs> True. One more time. Take two. Okay. <laughs> But we do that so automatically. Certain things happen in our lives and all of a sudden we're the victim. We are this person that we just, oh, if you only knew what I was going through. Oh, my life is so terrible. Let me tell you about it. Right? We have people like that. Stop 
following the path of least resistance. Stop doing the easy thing. Start jumping into that pool of experience, into that pool of incredibility, into that pool of passion, and find that one thing, or the 10 things, or whatever it is, that just sets your life on fire. And then do it. Do it. So how do we turn this around? Okay, we've told you some ways and how you do sit on the sidelines. How do we turn it around? You have to be clear on what you want. Be clear on what you want. Then ask for it. Oh my God, what a concept. Oh. But how many times are we murky? How many times are we murky? Well, I would like a, uh, um, uh, gee, I would like a, uh, um, 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 geez, I don't know what I want. God, give me something. <laughs> and then God comes back with that beautiful, phenomenal wisdom within and says, what would you like, my love? I love you so much. Anything you ask, I will give you. I don't know. I don't know what I want. Well, that's clue number one. Figure out what it is that you want. Be clear. See it, visualize it, feel it. If you don't ask, you don't get. So spend time contemplating your true desires and set your, entire, your intentions accordingly. When you are clear, miracles are set in motion. Miracles. Now you know something, there are no miracles. I hate to tell you that, I'll break the news. There are no miracles. It's no such thing. It's what we call an ordinary that we finally wake up to and say, oh my God, it's a miracle. Look what happened in my life. When we finally open up to what it is and that we're clear on something. It comes into our life and we think, oh, this is unusual. That's the way life is. Begin with the end in mind. Dream big. Guess what? If your dream isn't big enough, if you can accomplish it, without the help of the wisdom and the, and the intelligence of the universe, if you can accomplish it, it's not big enough. Not big enough. So get out of the small playing field and leap over to the big dreams and allow yourself to dream big. There are no limits, none whatsoever, none. That's hard for us to, uh, to, to comprehend, isn't it? There's no ceiling, there's no limitation, there's no anything. That's sometimes very hard to comprehend. They say dream too big, I say think, you're think you think too small. Dream big. And again, listen, meditate, okay. Meditation is something that you don't have to sit in a room and work on silencing your mind. If you garden, if you love to walk, if whatever it is that you love to do, do it. That's meditation. Because how many times do you get in the middle of something, painting, gardening, whatever it is, and you lose track of time? All of a sudden you start, and then it's five hours later, and you go, oh my God. Oh my goodness me. I miss days of our lives. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> but we start something, and that's a good indication of something that has your passion. Go do more of it. That's a meditation. If you hear a voice within, you say you cannot paint, then try all, by, by all means, paint that voice will be silenced. That voice will be silenced. Maybe not at first. Dance, paint, garden, whatever it is. Ask for what, ask for help. How many people don't ask for help? I know sometimes I don't, oh, I can do that. Don't worry, I got it all done. It's fine. 
Thank you so much for volunteering. I really appreciate it. That's the way I used to do it. I used to, oh, God, you know. If you don't do it yourself, it doesn't get done right. Anybody else feel like that sometimes? Yeah. Well, if I didn't do it, no one would. There's the martyr, the victim, or whatever. So I stopped doing that. Now I say, help! Help! I need you! That's the best thing. Because, you know, when you turn it around, when somebody asks you for help, when somebody asks you and trusts you to help them, how does it make you feel? It makes you feel kind of good, doesn't it? it? Makes you feel really great. So why would you take that away from somebody else? I will ask for help before my problem, my, the problem gets out of control. So how many times does, does, your, does the whole thing, the whole event or whatever you're doing or the, all the paperwork, it's so big and you can't, it's like you get paralyzed, you can't go any farther. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I get so bogged down, I can't see the forest for the trees and I'm sitting there and it's, I can't think. It's like I'm, I've been paralyzed and I don't do anything. And then I sit there and berate myself for, getting, for not doing anything because I have all this to do. Right? Ask for help. Try new things. Oh, no, I couldn't do that. Uh, what, if I, what if I fail? What if somebody, somebody sees me and I fail at that and they, they make fun of me? Ooh. Go out and try new things. That's exciting. That's adventurous. It keeps you going. It keeps you young. It keeps you happy. It brings in peace and joy into your life. And if you want something you've never had, then you've got to do something you've never done. Take a deep breath. And let it out. Change things when they become aware, when you become aware of them. Okay. Lift the big, vibrant life you crave today. Wear clothes that make you feel great. Do things that make you feel brave and make choices that bring you joy. Remember, what you practice, you get better at. When you choose to practice self-acceptance, compassion, and kindness towards yourself and others, you'll cultivate peace, courage, and joy. That's a habit worth getting good at. So go out. I say volunteer somewhere. Go out and volunteer. I've said that so people will come in for counseling and they say, I'm so bored or, or you know, I don't, I don't have any friends. And I said, go volunteer. Guess what happens? You get to meet people. And all of a sudden you've got friends and they're asking you to do things and, and you've got all this new stuff going on. And then you look back at your life and you say, wow, this is so great. Three weeks ago, I was sitting home alone. Now I'm out every night. Wow, how great is that? And to give you that opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> you're not, a, you gotta go, you know, you just gotta do what you gotta do. What can I tell you? <laughs> I gotta ask for help. <laughs> help is on the way. Next Saturday is our event from 11 to 4, but we need so much help. We need a village to help us. We have, our, we have to set up. We'll be there. I'll be there probably here at 6.30 helping Costa. He's volunteered to pick up tables and everything here. Um, we'll be there like a, at 6.30. Uh, Debbie's going to be over at the park at 6.30. We need everything. We need our, our beer and wine garden set up. We need our pop-ups and our tables set up. We need so much help during that day. Um, we have a photographer who is going to take, you know, free pet photos. You and your pet, bring your pet. You're going to get a free photo with your pet. But she's going to need some help with that. Uh, we need pop-ups or easy-ups, whatever you want to call it. Because we only have a few. So if you have a pop-up, please loan it to us. But make sure your name is on it, on the, uh, both on the outside and the pop-up. And um, so setting up the event, we're stuffing goodie bags on Tuesday. We can always help people. We can always use help to stuff the goodie bags. It's at 645 here in our classroom. So, um, and our sign-up sheets are out in the lobby. 
and it has all these different areas you can get involved in and help in. So see, ask, and I will receive. <laughs> yes, thank you so much, and namaste.